morning all. Now today I'm going to see if I can get to the bottom of this FTDI gate uh, fiasco, this business about a, a new driver for these FTDI USB to serial chips, which apparently bricks or damages or stops working fake versions of this chip. Now I've gathered together all the nanos that I've got with the FTDI chip. I've also got a nano here which never worked and I always suspected the FTDI chip so I don't really mind if I brick this one particularly. I've got a USB to serial uh, FTDI adapter here and also this nano doesn't use the FTDI, this actually uses the CH340. So of course this one is immune to the problem and these uh, CH340 nanos tend to be cheaper anyway. So this is um, what I'm likely to be buying from now on. So maybe this isn't an issue for people who go down the CH340 route anyway. Now I've been watching Dave Jones, of course, his uh, EEV blog number 676 rant about FTDI bricking the counterfeit chips. But I've also got open on my browser um, something here which is zeptobars.ru and there's a piece here on real versus the fake FT232RL chips. There's a SparkFun news item here which I mainly opened because it gives um, information on the driver that causes the problem. I uh, can't see that just at the moment but I'll come back to that. Um, there's also some stuff on ZDNet. Uh, this one's mainly just about the conversations that have been going on over the last few days. And I've also got uh, some stuff on Hackaday. There are several articles on Hackaday on this particular issue. So I'm going to start with the Nano that has the CH340 USB to serial driver. Now you can see immediately that the chips are very different. The CH340 is a smaller chip, far fewer pins. The FTDI uh, is, I can't count the number of pins on that, but there are quite a few. So I've opened my device manager and in the list here, under ports, uh, COM and LPT, we have a USB to serial CH340 on COM5. And if I get properties on that, uh, the panel comes up. Now we can get some information in this panel, uh, port settings, the driver. Now the driver provider is of course from the designer of the CH340, which is uh, wch.cn. Driver details, there are three files there uh, that relate to this driver. What else have we here? In events, there's this business here in the information. Device USB. Now here's the VID and it's a four digit hexadecimal number. So it's 1A86 and here's the PID 7523. Now remember this is nothing to do with the FTDI. This is about the CH340 but I wanted to just find out where everything was before I plug in my FTDI adapter. Now on this Zeptobars article it's zeptobars.ru so it's a Russian uh, website. We've got real versus fake and this says on the genuine chip it's laser etched or laser engraved while on the buggy chip it's printed and they're talking here of course about the uh, markings on the top of the chip and you can just about see that on the left hand one which is the real one there's a little bit of uh, depth to the logo and on the right one it's just simply printed. Now if I look at all my FTDI chips with the light behind they do all look like they're laser etched. I can't see any, and I've got this one here as well, that look like they're just printed. So at first glance, they look genuine from that um, standpoint. Now this would be quite surprising because if you know how I operate, you'll know that uh, I generally just buy the cheapest thing I can find on eBay. So I wouldn't be surprised if some of these FTDI chips were fake. But um, the only way I'm going to find out is to plug them in. Now this one that's upside down here also looks like it's probably laser engraved, laser etched. But this is the one that never really worked. Now the 328P does work because I can program this using the 
ISP header using a USB ASP programmer or something like that. But I could never program this thing through the USB port. So let's plug this in and see what um, properties we've got in the control panel in the device manager. Right, I've just plugged this in and it actually now says installing device. So this is interesting. This could be loading new drivers. Let's see what happens when this finishes. Now while it's installing that driver, I've just checked the driver version number and we've got 2.10.0.0. Now in the SparkFun news item, and I will link to all these uh, pages, it says with the release of Windows driver 2.12.0.0 on 26th of August, a part of the driver's functionality is to silently change the PID, the product ID. And uh, Hackaday are saying the affected versions of the FTDI driver are 2.11 and 2.12, released on August the 26th. The latest version of the driver that does not have this chip bricking functionality is 2.10. Well, I appear to have 2.10. Now, it's fair enough uh, to say that I haven't actually plugged in any of these FTDI chips since August the 26th. So have I got lucky and uh, avoided installing the 2.12 driver that causes the problems simply because I wasn't doing anything on my FTDI chips uh, while this was all going on? Now the latest news, and this is on the ZeptoBars article, is uh, FTDI driver in question is currently removed from Windows Update. Also there is an update in the official FTDI blog. Let's have a look at that. And uh, here's the letter or the message on FTDI's website that Dave Jones read out on his uh, video, which says, as you're probably aware, the semiconductor industry is increasingly blighted by the issue of counterfeit chips, blah, 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 blah. And then uh, the recently released driver release has now been removed from Windows Update so that on-the-fly updating cannot occur. Okay, so let's go back to my device manager. Here are ports. Now this one is USB serial port COM3. This is with an FTDI chip. Properties and we have the driver is 2.10.0.0 and that's the one that goes back to the 27th of January this year. Um, now if I go to this events thing I can pick out these VID, the vendor ID. So for FTDI the vendor ID is 0403 and the product ID is 6001, and that's the product ID that works. That's what gets changed to zero by this, uh, well, you might call it a rogue driver, the 2.12 driver. Now, I wonder what would happen if I intentionally tried to update this driver, search automatically for updated drivers. Let's see what happens. Okay, so Windows has determined that the driver software for your device is up to date. So it looks like by not getting involved with this during the period where it was a problem, uh, I'm now safely uh, stuck with 2.10 and I can't get 2.12 and I'm probably not going to have a problem. Now you may be able to check um, what version of driver you have even before you plug in your FTDI device because if I go to uh, my COM4 properties, now my device is plugged in, of course, but if I go to driver details, there are four files that relate to the FTDI drivers. Uh, they're in C, Windows, System32. Two of them are in drivers, and two of them are just in System32 itself. If you locate these four files and check the version numbers, you may be able to check whether you have this 2.12 driver. So here's one of the files, it's uh, ftsurui2. Now if I get uh, properties on this, I get this panel up and in details it tells me that the product version is 2.10. So by checking these four files you may be able to work out whether or not you've got the 2.12 or a safe 2.10. I think 2.11 was also dodgy um, before you even plug in your FTDI if you're a bit concerned about doing that. But uh, now of course I'm quite intrigued to know whether any of these FTDI chips on my nanos, including the Nano 
that doesn't work and also this uh, USB to serial adaptable that I use for the Pro Minis is actually a fake. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, Hackaday article again. Now it says, thanks to the efforts of Markan over on the EE blog, EEV blog forums, we know exactly how the earlier FTD TDI driver works. And I think when they say earlier, they mean the 2.12 driver, which has now been withdrawn uh, to brick counterfeit devices. And uh, well, I don't really understand driver source code, but there's uh, a little bit of an explanation here. It says, uh, it is an extremely clever bit of code, clear evidence FTDI is intentionally bricking counterfeit devices. And uh, something about writing zero uh, to the checksum, something of that issue. Now it says a new FTDI driver, presumably one that will tell you a chip is fake without bricking it, will be released next week. While not an ideal outcome for everyone, at least the problem of drivers intentionally bricking devices is behind us. So it'd be interesting to see what occurs next week, if indeed that new driver comes out next week, um, and whether it actually tells you that you've got fake FTDI chips. Now, there are people taking a stance on this and saying, I'm going to avoid FTDI chips from now on. And uh, Dave Jones had his uh, thoughts on this. But really, from my point of view, it's about price. So the CH340 Nano, this one, I think currently is around £2.50 and the FTDI based nanos are more like about £4. Now I haven't checked uh, today's prices, they may both be a little bit lower than that, but uh, it does make sense for me to just buy the CH340 products because on Windows 8 uh, certainly the drivers have never been an issue, they just work and they're cheaper. And uh, now, of course, you can also get clones of the Arduino Uno using the CH340. So uh, here's an Arduino Uno clone. Now, Arduino, of course, is open source, so it's uh, perfectly fair that uh, other manufacturers are building these things. And um, this clone Uno CH340, about £5. So, genuine or fake? Are my FTDIs the real thing or not? Quite interested to know now so I'll keep an eye on this evolving story and if there is a new driver or if any uh, new information comes to light then I'll perhaps produce an update to this video.